actually show you what you need to do when you're showing the dog. The first thing that I want to talk about it a little bit is equipment and how we put the collar on the dog. I have a couple of extras here if somebody needs to borrow one, everything, but just tell you a little bit about these, these collars. I like to use the snake chain collar because it doesn't tangle in their hair and it slides really easily. So when you're showing the dog, there's several different ways you can hold the leash. You can do it with it on top like this. The, the wrist that you run doing it this way is pulling them up, choking them, and bringing their front end up off the ground where they start going like this, like a, a hackney. The other way is right under their ear and just with a little tension like that and it gives you a little bit more control. We also will take the, the collar and put it under their chin. And if you can show your dog on a loose lead, that really works well because you're not interfering with their movement. And the looser you can have your leash, the better the dog is because if you're pulling up on it, two things happen. If you're nervous, your nerves go right down there and the dog's like, oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> you know? This, this, this is going to be bad, you know, so if you can do a loose lead, you know, and you can, that's fine. Most of your dogs probably are not to that point, you know, in, in leash work, you know, because I know a lot of, okay, let me back up one thing. Today, your dog is not a hunting dog. He's a show dog. So we're going to <laughs> treat him differently. And I want to just address that. You know, a lot of people say, well, my dog's a hunting dog, you know. I don't need no fluffy dog. <laughs> Quorum equals function. The reason for confirmation shows is to evaluate the structure of the dog. If they're not put together right, they will not hold up in the field. And I have seen it in the field where a dog that has a straight shoulder angle plays out because all of their drive is coming off the rear end and they're pushing their whole body forward because they can't extend. You know, when your dog runs and his legs go out like this, if the dog's legs going like this, he has no extension and he can't cover the ground. And it's exhausting. I saw it in the field at a trial one time. The dog was laying down in 10 minutes because he was pushing his whole body off the rear end. So structure is important, especially when you're talking about if you're planning on breeding your dog, three things they need to have. Confirmation, health, and temperament. And, and of course, your hunting ability, you know, your natural hunting ability. But those things have to be all in place before you breed a dog. So that's why we do confirmation shows. This is my demo dog, Huckleberry. And I can use him for this case because if you read the standard for the skipper key, it reads almost exactly like the Breton. They're both cobby dogs. They're both square in their structure. So, and he, he's done this a time or two. <laughs> so anyway, talking about equipment, you know, we have the chain collar. What we don't want to see is a big heavy collar, not your leather collar, not your leather hunting collar. You know, if you don't have anything else, you know, you're welcome to borrow one of mine or, you know, just for future reference, big heavy leash. I like to use a light leather lead. This is actually one of my Breton show leads. It's not his, you know, but this is what I would show my Bretons with. I also like to color coordinate it. I use typically a gold collar and a brown leash on the orange and white and liver dogs and a silver or black. Now, sometimes you can get a black choke collar or chain collar and a black lead for the black dogs. And the reason for that is you don't want anything to draw the judge's eye away from the dog it, it, in contrast. Like I would never show this dog in a white lead. So talked to Elena this morning and her ring procedure is pretty much what we're used to. And I thought it would just be easier to show you what you're going to do initially. 
So when you walk in the ring, you'll come in the ring and depending on how many dogs are in your class determines how far you go in. Like if you have five dogs in there, you might end up going all the way to the corner, the first dog. Make some, put some space between you and your dog. You come in and you stand, stand your dog up. This is called free stacking. And you're not putting, you know, placing their feet or anything. And you're just standing the dog up so the judge can have their first impression. She'll go down the line, look at all the dogs, and then she'll ask everybody to go around the ring. When you, the first person that goes out, it's always polite to look back to the exhibitors behind you and say, are you ready? Instead of just taking off and leaving them in the dust. You know, put some space between you and the dog in front of you. You don't want to crowd the dog in front of you. They especially dogs that have never been shown before, they don't appreciate having somebody's nose up their tail. Mm -hmm. So put some space between them. Depending on how fast your dog moves, you don't want them galloping around. Everything is done at the trot. So if you have a fast dog, let the first the dog that's in front of you get a little bit of a head start. Put some space between you so when you take your dog out, you can get him moving and moving easily and not run into the dog in front of you. You know, there's no time limit on this, you know, so if you have to wait a few seconds, let the other dog get going. And then, because you want the judge to be able to see your dog. And uh, so you'll go all the way around the ring and she'll probably line you all up here. And then she will examine each of the dogs. She'll go over them you know, head to tail. Two things that, you know, if you're gonna show your dog that you need to teach your dog, one is going on a, a loose lead, and second, showing the teeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trick is, when you're showing the, the dog's teeth, the judge needs to see the dog's teeth, you don't. Yeah. So don't get your head down in front of the dog <laughs> <laughs> where the judge can't, you know, it's like can't see. And this happens more often with us when we have dogs on a table. You know, people are like, look yeah. at the dog. Well, you should have looked at your dog's teeth before you got here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but they, she will want to look at their dog, your dog's teeth. They need to be familiar with a stranger touching them. And especially the boy dogs, because they get a little personal. Mm -hmm. But, and in that respect, when you present your dog, your dog needs to be clean. No pee on them, you know, and if you don't have time to bathe them, get some baby wipes or even paper towels or something and just, you know, clean them up the best you can because nothing is worse for the judge than touching a sticky dog. Girl dogs, if they're in heat, please tell the judge and she will avoid the girl bits because she doesn't want to touch that and then go touch another dog. You know, so it's just very polite to say, my dog's in heat. And it's not a problem showing a dog in heat, but let your judge know. So after she goes over and examines the dog, she will ask you to do what they call a down and back. And she'll either have you go straight to that corner, or she may have you go straight that way. This is where it's important to pay attention, listen to your judge's instructions, and uh, watch the other dogs. Watch how the other dogs are doing it and if they're following her. If they're not following her instructions, don't follow them. <laughs> so listen to what she says, how she wants it to be done. When you're doing the down and back, we typically, when you're going around, the judge is looking for the side movement, the extension and balance. But when you're doing the down and back, She's watching the rear movement and the front movement. We typically show the down and back a little slower than you do going around. And the reason for that is the faster you go, the rear end starts to converge mm -hmm. where the, the hind feet you know, go together like this. You want them moving as smoothly and as straight, straightly, as straight, is straightly a word, uh, as possible 
so she gets a good look of the dog's movement. If you have an issue, if the dog is being, you know, silly and yeah. spinning around or anything, stop. Go back and start over. That's okay. You know, you don't have to say, oh, we messed up, you know. And if she doesn't get the view that she wanted, she may ask you to do it again. You know, take your time, take a deep breath, do it again. I go down to the corner, stop, talk to my dog, turn him around, and then bring him straight back to her. Now, when she's, you're coming back to her, don't run right into her. Stop a few feet, four or five feet in front of her so she can stand there and look at the dog. This is another place where you're going to free stack the dog and just stand back like this and let her look at him. And then she'll ask you to go around again. When I skipped over a bit, when she goes over to examine the dog, that's where you stack your dog. Oh, and the batons. What I found the easiest to do is just gently pick them up about an inch and set them down. Don't pick them all the way up and drop them. I've seen that. But just pick them up and when you set them back down, they most naturally put their feet where they should be. You can do the same thing in the rear. Now, when you're doing the rear, on these dogs because they're a cobby dog you, you may have seen other dog shows where you see dogs where they're yeah. Yeah. stretched way out like this he doesn't even want to do it <laughs> these dogs you want from the point of the behind through the hawk if you draw a line from the point of their butt it should intersect the front of their hind foot okay. so that and the, this perpendicular to the ground it's not under them yeah. it's not way back here so you want them and it's really it's natural if the dog's built right you just pick them up and set them down that's where they're gonna land so and then you may if your dog's not familiar with having their teeth ex, uh, looked at and everything we have a saying, control the head, control the dog. So if they're wiggling around, get a hold of him and, and hold him so she can look at him. And then we can do teeth. And then she'll go over the dog like that. Do we show the teeth or does the judge do that? Preferably, you show the teeth. So we have issues, you know, this, this has come out the last few years because there's a lot of diseases transmitted you know and the judges especially in an all breed show they're touching hundreds of dogs we would prefer that we show she, <coughs> she may want to do it herself or she may not you know what i've often found is when the judge comes up and comes to the front of the dog and look at him i just go beep and that we're good so uh and this breed is just bite, which is just front teeth. Some breeds is full dentition, and you have to actually open their mouth so they can see all the teeth. You know, but uh, do you have any questions at this point? With your collars, uh, you have the, these are considered the choke chain? Or right, those, yeah. There's the martingale style, is that? Yes, I have some martingales okay. here. So you can use those too. The, the thing about the martingale is, is like this. Put it on the dog and then tighten that up. But this one you can really only show at the top of their neck. You know. Mm -hmm. So and that's fine as long as you're not pulling up on the dog. Mm -hmm. You know. And so there's a couple of martingales here, there's a couple of more. You know, these, this leash will be available too if somebody wants to borrow them. All I ask is, I'd like them back. <laughs> <laughs> but I may have missed it, but you want that as close up on the neck as possible? I... My preference is right under the ear, okay. like that. And you can still control the dog, but you're not lifting the front end up.
and there's kind of a Can you turn the dog? Pardon me? Can you turn him so we can see? There's kind of a happy medium also as far as the control without some our dogs like to because they're so anxious or they want to get going where they start getting choking a little right, bit. Right, right. Yep. So you try to find that balance where you have control but they're still but not choking them. Right. Sometimes yeah. there's not the dog. Definitely. Well, what if you just put a loop? And that's where what you know our goal is to work towards is this. Show them on a loose attitude. Because that shows the judge their actual movement and there's no interference. So we're gonna take a little turn around and I'll do what she you know, she will ask you to do so you kind of see what it looks like. Don't race. You know, I know a lot of these dogs are, have never done this before and they're going to be excited and they want to jump around. I mean, just relax. Be calm. The more calm you are, the better for the dog. And if you have to stop and start over, better to do that than to just keep going. Huckleberry, come on. So, boy dogs go first, girl dogs go second, orange and white goes first, other colors go second. So she'll do all the orange and white dogs, then she'll do the other color dogs, then she'll bring her selections out of the winners of those various age classes. We'll come back in for best orange and white, best other color, then those dogs will come back in and compete for best male. So you'll you'll be in the ring hopefully a few times. She'll do the same thing with the girls. Then whoever wins best male, best female, champions, they all compete for best and breed. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's not easy. Again, Linda, as, what was the classes again as far as like color and male? Orange and female? orange and white males first other color males, orange and white females, other color females. And after you show your dog, don't leave because you may have to come back in. So hang around, stand around. Typically when they bring you in the ring, you'll have your armband, they'll bring you in in numerical order. So numbers, you just line up there until the judge has a chance to, to look at the dogs and ask you to start showing your dog. This is one other thing that I want to mention. Don't ever stop showing your dog. You can relax and let the dog relax, but always keep your eye on the judge and your dog because she may do this and look at your dog while you're standing in line. So. No laying down, no rolling over, rubbing their belly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the dog to do that either, right? Pardon me? You don't want the dog to do that either. <laughs> no, 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 probably not. <laughs> so always never stop showing your dog. Is the show ring going to be out here? This is it. This is it? You only have one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One, one ring, one judge. <laughs> 
Is it just Elena? Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, she's excited to do this. We are too. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm happy to do this. And if you have any questions, we'll mention too when you're preparing your dog, put the scissors away. Yeah. Don't cut the hair. <laughs> Don't yeah, don't cut their hair. Make it, get them clean, brush them, floof up the ears. You know, but don't, no trimming. Not even the ears, because they're long on certain dogs. Some of them. The, the trick is, good. if you were going to do that, it should have been last week. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. the new scissor cuts show. Pardon me. New scissor cuts show. Yeah. The older ones have had a chance to smooth out a little. Right, right, yep. right. So, uh, you don't want yeah, scissor cuts. You know, you want it to look as natural as possible, and that, that takes some practice. But I like to do it a week before, and then it gives the hair a chance to get more natural to it. But if you have any, want any help or anything, I have my Dremel here. If somebody needs toenails done, um, you know, I didn't bring a slicker brush, but you know, we'll be happy to look at your dog and see what we can do to wash them up. Where do you want to do that? <laughs>